Hey Knights. Knights! Welcome to this week's Nightly News, where the theme is Rivalry Week. Here's Haley with Green Screen Slash Effects. Hi Knights, this is Haley. Today we're going to be talking about green screens. The process of a green screen, or chroma keying, is basically where you take a recorded video, like digitally transferred, or a picture, or a computer output, and isolate a single color in the narrowly defined region of the spectrum. The color of the green screen is typically bright green or bright blue, because these hues often differ from the human skin tones and aren't usually found in clothing. Thank you for watching. Signing off, this has been Haley. Now that was pretty sporty. Here's Noah and Annette with a special band story. Hey Knights, I'm Noah Apodaca. It is a beautiful Monday afternoon here at the castle and we are doing a special report for band on Nightly News. On the weekend of September 7th, Isaac's mother posted a beautiful message and video on Facebook in which Isaac and his brother Aiden are showcased performing with the marching band on, at halftime on September 7th. To date, as of September 16, 2019, the video has 2.9 million views on Facebook and counting. Isaac Brealey Rue made the front page of the Las Cruces Sun News on Friday, September 13th in the local paper. The article states the same thing as KTSM about the video going viral on Facebook as posted by his mother. Just hitting him. And I thought, that's really strange. He's hitting his drum head in time with the battery in the back. But I noticed a glimpse of something was connecting to him. This touching story has impacted millions over the country and, of course, the world, as it has made local, national, and international headlines. Local, local headlines include the Las Cruces Sun News, CBS4, KTSM, and KFOX 14 news affiliates in El Paso, Texas. In the Facebook post posted by Isaac's mother, she states in a short excerpt of the following paragraph, Last night the boys had their first marching performance of the season. Isaac did not set up water bottles or run equipment. The band director after the performance thanked me for allowing Isaac to be part of the band and Aiden has told me many times how much everyone loves having Isaac there, but I don't think I really got it till last night. This heartfelt message posted by Isaac's mother 100% signifies the dedication and, and passion that we have in the band program here at Oñate. Oñate High School and the Las Cruces Public School District says that no matter a disability, a child will always be included in school activities. Hurricane Here's Jasmine and Sophia with a story about Hurricane Dorian. I'm Sophia. And I'm Jazz. Today on our segment of Nightly News, we're going to go into depth about hurricanes and how they affect the world around us. As you all know, hurricane season began May 20th and lasts until November 20th. This greatly affects the West Coast. The West Coast recently experienced Hurricane Dorian, which brought great devastation. What even is a hurricane? A hurricane is when large winds spring up water from the ocean, typically in tropical areas. States of emergency remained in effect along coastal zones in Florida, Georgia, North and South Carolina, and Virginia. The storm shut down parts of Disney World in Orlando, Florida, grounded flights at seven airports, and forced airlines to cancel more than 1,300 flights in and out of Florida. Hurricanes are categorized into five different categories depending on their wind speeds. What's the most dangerous part of a hurricane? Um, so the most dangerous part of a hurricane is the surge of water coming in and destroying the lives of the people who live there. Everybody should keep the West Coast in their prayers right now in their time of need. Signing off from Nightly News, this is Sophia. And I'm Jazz. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Sophia and Jazz. Here's James with 9-11 Facts. My name is Jacob, and today we're going to be walking around the castle asking teachers about 9-11 and how did it impact your life. Hi, what's your name? Uh, Monty Womble. Hi, what's your name? Hi, my name is Mr. Luchet. I work here at Oñate High School. Hi, what's your name? Senora Vizcarra. Um, what were you in 9-11? I was at a middle school. I was uh, just getting out of the shower uh, at my house. I was in a meeting when I was working for Dow Chemical Company. How did it affect your life? Uh, kind of made it scary because uh, my mother and father-in-law were just getting ready to go on a trip and all the airplanes got grounded that day. It made me think a lot about my life and about the impact that things like this have on other people. 
Um, it's one of those situations that you'll never forget. The first few years, it was it was difficult. It was difficult for the first few years. It was really tough to think of, you know, traveling or, or what was going to happen. And, and so for the first few years, I thought of my kids, they were little, and what was going to happen in their future. How do you think it affected the United States? Uh, I think it really hurt our uh, whole core. Major changes were done. I mean, I know that the government agencies uh, now communicate a lot better. That I hope it brought us together. I think it changed a lot of things. This is Jacob signing out for Night News. And see you all next time. Thanks, James. Here's a story about Drumline with Donna. Hey, Knights. Welcome back to another edition of Nightly News. I know we hardly don't show our Drumline, but here's some clips from the homecoming game. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Here's this week's social experiment with Kyle and Fur. My name is Fur, and today we're going to do a social experiment with these hundreds. Yeah! Today we're going to be dropping the money, a hundreds, and see if people are going to give it back or just run away with it. Mike! Mike! Huh? Drop the money, Mike. Drop the money. Drop the money. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like when I dropped it. I mean, we were actually. Like, what are you supposed to do? <laughs> Honestly, I'm a good guy, so I like to return stuff that are not mine. And I saw you put your hand behind your back, try to put it in your back pocket, and I fell and I was like, oh, you dropped this $100 bill. I was like, mate, come get your money. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> So how you felt like when I dropped it? I felt like, hey, that's a $100 bill. Don't <laughs> don't leave that anywhere because people could be actually wanting to put it back in their wallet, like put it in their wallet. And if, so I was kind enough to pick it up and give it back to this rightful owner because you don't leave $100 bills like that on the floor house. It's gone like that. That's good. What about you? How you felt? Well, you're like a good friend of me, and you're like a football team, and I know it's the right thing to do either way, so like, I was like, gotta help someone out. up and I saw money on the floor and I saw you walking and just planning to give it back. As you guys saw, everyone turned back the money, which is good. It's up for two people. Thank you for watching our video. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and make sure to look at our next video. Next night, the news. Yeah, later. Wow, that was cool. Here's Jose in sports. Hey, nice. I'm Jose and I'm Terry. Welcome back to Night Center number three. After a tough loss against Centennial, girls volleyball will now be facing their district rival Mayfield on Saturday at 12. Go support. After some extremely bad luck, the boys football team is looking to crack open a victory against Centennial this Friday at the Aggie Memorial at 7. Make sure and go support. Boys soccer has also had a slow start with their first couple of games. After their big win against Demi, they're hoping to beat Alamo to head 2-2 into district. Now it's time for a girls soccer update. Let's kick it over to Viv to see what she has to say. Hey Knights, I'm Viviana Alcantar and this week we're going to dive into our girls soccer team. Our girls soccer team has been working non-stop through this summer to get ready for this upcoming season. Let's go talk to our head coach and a couple of girls to see what they have to say. So since I was a freshman until now, 
I say that the soccer team has improved. Every game we improve, every practice we improve, and every year we've improved. Every practice we usually work on something different, whether it's conditioning or just basically getting together as a team and working together, working hard. Ever since the summer, we've still improved, and every game we've improved even more. Uh, how, what are your expectations for this upcoming, the rest of the season? Um, I expect us to still work hard at practices and work together as a team in games and improve every game in every game like we have been throughout the year so far and the past years. I feel very fortunate to be the coach because it's a good group of girls and I really feel like the last couple of years they've shown a lot of improvement. So I feel privileged um, and a little and humbled to be able to be a part of it. And we continue to improve. Um, we do take a little, a few steps back sometimes, but that's a normal progression. But I really feel that um, the improvement has um, increased tremendously. In the long run, I really feel that there's a lot of good things that are going to come out of hopefully the season. Um, and our goal is to try to make it to state, but we got to get a couple of good big wins for that to happen. And I really think that we can do it. With an upcoming game against the Alamogordo Tigers on Saturday and the Las Cruces Bulldogs on Tuesday, we wish our girls very good luck and the good luck for the rest of the season. Signing off for Nightly News, I'm Viviana Alcantara. Thanks, Viv. Coach Nunez and his team are cruising through a great year. Go support them on Saturday at 9 in Berlin. All right, nice. This has been it for Night Center. This has been Terry. This has been We'll see. Thanks for joining us this week, Knights. I'm Ethan. I'm Audrey. And we'll see you soon.